is Hawk Mountain Time and I am live in my studio. Today, I thought that I would share with you, uh, well, as always, it's I wanna share with you what's going on with me, what I'm working on, and I'm really excited today because I uh, one of the questions that I get all the time is, can I wash a collage quilt? And so I wanted to show you what happens when you wash a collage quilt and give you my tips about um, about doing that. So uh, I have taken the Woodlands quilt. I just pulled it out of the wash. So this quilt is made with a parchment pressing pattern. So parchment pressing, if you'll remember, is one of the methods that I use to make collage quilts. I have two methods. One is parchment pressing. One is uh, using a foundation, pre-printed foundation panel. So these three quilts right here that you can see, this the Sweet Summer uh, Table Runner, my intention is to use it as a table topper. And um, the 4th of July will be when I use it the first time. But I want to be able to wash it, right? So I... Uh, wanted to do an, you know, an experiment. I have done this before, but wanted to make sure that with a parchment pressing pattern, everything is going to turn out okay. So first of all, um, this is a parchment pressing pattern, which means all of these pieces have been created independently on parchment paper and then applied to a foundation or to the background fabric. And you can see the background is just a simple pieced background. Um, so prior to washing this, the, um, the method that I, you know, I, I always recommend very dense quilting because this is all raw edge applique or raw edge. Um, all the pieces are raw edge, but I want you to take a good look. So it turned out beautiful. I washed this on delicate cycle, which of course is cold. And then I threw it in the dryer too on delicate. So it dried for 32 minutes. Um, and I am really, really pleased with the finished texture. So it is super soft and supple and snuggly. And I would absolutely use this as a baby quilt um, because I feel like now it is just a soft, snuggly, Quilt. Here's the quilting. So you can see the quilting on the back is pretty dense and the quilting. Um, I do a lot of what's called doodle stitching. So that means that I will kind of follow the motif that I'm working on. So you can see the doodle stitching in the squirrel and in the mushrooms. In fact, you can probably see it best in the mushrooms. Uh, let's see. There we go. Um, and as long as the stitching is dense, I don't ever recommend doing quilting stitches that are more than a half inch. In fact, most of the stitching on this is about a quarter inch between stitch lines. And, th and then in the background, I just have an all over meander. And so those dense stitch lines in ensure that all of the pieces have been tacked down. I'm gonna just try and show you, let me stand up the most so there's a tiny tiny amount of fraying when just a very very subtle amount there's a little bit that has come up but man i am really really pleased with this it gives me a lot of confidence to feel like i can use my sweet summer and wash it without any problem so I, that's what I wanted to share with you today. I thought that you would maybe appreciate kind of understanding, um, you know, what's, what's the result if I wash a collage quilt. So dense quilting is the key with the parchment pressing or with anything, um, any type of adhesive, you're gonna wanna use a permanent adhesive. And with the light steam esteem too, which is my preference, uh, the idea is to steam it really well right after you um, have finished the collage. So you're going to steam it very well and that will help to dissipate the temporary adhesive layers so that you can quilt through it really well. And then washing it also has really softened this quilt up. So it's just, it feels like a really yummy quilt the way, you know, we like those traditional quilts. So 
not every collage quilt that you make has to be a wall hanging. You can also use it for a quilt. So uh, that is that. The other thing I wanna just tell you kind of what I have been working on this week a lot with the help of my darling son-in-law is um, I got my studio finally really organized and I just wanna share how I did that. So this all is going away because I now have file drawers. So this little unit that we built in, it's a freestanding kitchen island that we customized from Ikea. So it was a, you know, a reasonable price, not super cheap because it's really great. But the thing I'm super excited about is these drawers um, are really shallow and deep and I can put all of my parchment patterns and all of the pieces that I'm just working on in those drawers and keep them nice and tidy. And that has been um, something that I desperately needed because I was going crazy with parchment paper everywhere. Um, sometime I'll take you over to this other wall too where I have another wall unit that's from Ikea and um, it just has 13 inch square blocks. So I keep all of my fabric pieces there. So I am feeling like a million bucks because I've got a tidy studio now. <laughs> and um, I want to just give a shout out to my friend Patty Rusk, who uh, dropped by from California yesterday. So um, she's a friend you know, like all of you, we've become friends on Facebook. And if you're ever in Utah, if you're ever in Sandy, Utah, and would love, would like to meet me in person, I would love to meet you and it, have you come up to my studio. Patty has just been somebody who introduced herself. She invited me to San Diego and I taught at her guild and we've become friends and we just communicate on Facebook. And so when she's in town to see her kids, um, she comes to see me. So it was really fun to have her come by and I invite you also, I invite you to come to my studio anytime. So I know some of you live in Utah, but if you're ever coming, you know, if you ever come to Utah, please um, give me a holler and we can go to lunch or we can, you can come to my studio and say hi. So that is that. Let me look at questions now to make sure um, if there are any questions I and I, if it's okay, I'm also going to just say hello to everybody from, we've got Kentucky and Texas. I love it. Iowa, Texas again. Um, so yeah, somebody just said, this blows my mind. You put it in the dryer too. I did. I put it in the dryer intentionally to rough it up a little bit more. You know, I, I mean, ideally we would lay it flat and be really careful with it. But I'm like, you know what? I want to see, see what the how this is going to turn out. So um, yes, I washed on delicate and I put it in the dryer as well. And there were, there's very, very minimal fraying, but it did soften it up and there's no bleeding of the colors or anything because I don't wash my fabric before I use it, before I use it in a collage quilt, you, you know, so I am using what I call virgin fabric in a collage quilt. I haven't washed it. So nothing has been washed. And I think it turned out really, really well. So, um, okay. Oh, the Netherlands. Hello, Nancy from the Netherlands and Midland from Fort Lauderdale. Fantastic. Great to have you here. Hugh from Houston. Um, yeah, the drawers are great, Susan. I, I really love those deep, wide drawers because I have lots of parchment patterns that I'm working on. I have a lot going on all the time. And um, it's, I don't like having it all out in my studio. Sometimes I need to put it away and then pull it back out. So um, someone just asked, are you going to release the crab pattern or will it, will it be part of a book with patterns? So I have really been, I, yes, I want to release all these patterns. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to pull this all together in a cohesive group. So just to give you a little background, um, for those of you who might not know, let me share all of these little critters with you. So I did these critters during my 30 day challenge. Let me pull them all together. 
bring them over here and share them with you. You can see, um, okay, let me get this stuff off my desk here. Okay, so I'm gonna just share these with you. Ladybug, um, a wasp. We've got the goldfish. Ooh, I love that, goldfish. <laughs> my snail, sneaky, slimy snail. Uh, the parrot. And we've got the crab. Oh, I love that crab. It turned out so good. Uh, my iguana. And the beetle. Oh, I love that too. That might be one of my, that might be my favorite, but I actually, I think my all time favorite is my frog. So I have these critters that I did in my 30 day creative challenge. And I, I have not, I've just kind of been moving forward. Try, you know, I did the, I was tired of critters, didn't know what I was doing. So I uh, made the summer sweet summer pattern because I wanted to use that as a table topper. Uh, so back to these little critters, I do intend to make a pattern, but I would love your feedback about what to do with them. You know, originally I was like, oh, I'll just keep going, which I want to do, but with a little more direction. I originally thought I'll do an alphabet, but that would be an enormous quilt to do 26 of these little guys. So now I'm kind of thinking I might divvy them up and do amphibians or critters that start with the letter F or green critters or something like that. So um, I'm just, I would love your feedback about that, how to pull these all together. The other thing too, you'll notice like some of them, this one is just on green. I want to incorporate some more fun stuff kind of like the parrot. Now I feel like the parrot is a finished project. Um, and I could leave this as a collage quilt and just to hang him up, uh, you know, finish him, quilt him. But I kind of want to add, I want to do additional birds and make this maybe something else. So that's why I haven't done anything with them. I'm just kind of thinking on it. I'm thinking on it. The other thing that I've been thinking on is I really have to dive back into that routine that I did in April where I was pushing myself to create every single day because I get caught up in the details of running the business and, you know, launching a pattern and I need the creative. I need to get my hands dirty and do collage every single day. So um, anyway, that's that. Uh, Diane from Pennsylvania, welcome. Okay, so let's see here if there are other questions. Susan just asked, do you sew around each piece like an applique? No, I don't. Um, again, each piece is separate, but I treat the whole thing as a quilt top. So I don't worry about going around each piece. I simply do a dense quilting and generally a doodle stitch. So I hope that answers your question, Susan. Toronto says hello. And Wisconsin, North Carolina, Wisconsin, great to have you guys here. Thank you so much always for joining me. So Nancy said, what motif do you quilt? Um, Nancy, when I am looking at a flower, for instance, I will kind of emphasize the petals. When I, for example, when I, tackle this little guy, what I'll do is I'll just doodle stitch, maybe outlining some leaves. Well, not outlining, but kind of mimicking that, um, that shape. Um, with the parrot, I will mimic his feathers a little bit more. So by doodle stitching, I mean, if I were just kind of taking a pencil and kind of sketching and adding lines and whatnot in the quilting. That's generally what I what I do when, when I quilt. Now I don't always quilt, sometimes I quilt by check. So um, I just got back the, I just got back the, or, the orchid and potted pansies from 
my amazing quilter who really is awesome. Marion McClellan is her name and she does a great job. I'll pull those out in just a second. We can look at those. Um, Elaine from Scotland. Oh, I want to go to Scotland so bad. Uh, Marion, Mill Creek, Washington, Saskatchewan, Laurel. Thank you, Jennifer from Indiana for being here. Henderson, Nevada. I hope I see you again in August and Hollywood, California, San Diego. I love seeing where everybody's from. This is really fun. Uh, okay. Here's another question. Tracy from outside of Tulsa just asked, what size is your drafting table? Let's um, measure that right now, shall we? If I've got, let me let me measure this for you and we'll see what size this is. Oh, I don't know where I put my tape measure. I don't know where I put my tape measure, but I think I am going to guess that the drafting table is about 48 inches wide, probably by 36 inches, 32 or 36 inches. Um, I have more information about this drafting table, I believe on my website. So favorite products that I've purchased or that I really like. Um, you can see there is a blog post at collagequilter.com that has my favorite products. And I believe we have the drafting table on there. Um, if it's not there, just email me, Emily at Collage Quilter, and I'll share a link with you. You can find it. Somebody just asked me. You can find it at Staples. I got mine at World Market. It's something that, you know, do a do a Google, Google search for drafting table or email me, and I'll help you with that. So, um, okay, so that's about the drafting table. Uh, let's see. Someone just asked, I am doing fabric collage with my 15 and seven year old granddaughters. That is a great idea for summer. Um, they are going to love it. Um, Las Vegas, Missouri, Indy um, makes me want to quilt, make a quilt from your, your great granddaughter due in October. You betcha. Brazil, Gloria from Brazil. Glad to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, Gloria, just FYI, so my one of my dearest friends in the world is from Brazil, and um, my husband served an LDS mission in Brazil, so he speaks Portuguese, and he wants to go back to Brazil. Um, okay, Pamela, hello, welcome from Washington. Uh, Pamela is a frequent, um, I recognize Pamela, thank you for being here. Wimberley, Texas, uh, yep, I just, I hope you got those books that I just sent you to your for your quilt retreat. Um, Amy, great to see you. Thank you for sharing the Grizzly in the Facebook group. It turned out fantastic. Um, okay, let's see. Um, Connie just asked a question. She said, I noticed all of your books are sold out. When will be when will they be available again? Connie is my neighbor in Cottonwood Heights. Um, so let me tell you, I am working on so my Take Flight book is now in stock again. And my original book, Collage Quilter, Essentials for Success with Collage Quilt, I am working on the second edition for that. So I have allowed that to go, to go out of stock because I am very close to launching that. It will be in July, hopefully. I was hoping at the end of this month, but man, this month just came up so quick. But um, I am working on it daily and I'm really excited for the second edition because the first edition, um, I wrote that before I had kind of developed this parchment pressing technique. So that will be in there. And I have developed as an artist and as a teacher, you know, doing this every day and pushing myself, I learn a lot. And so, I feel like I needed to update the information that's in that book. So if you'll be patient, the new book will be available soon, hopefully in July. Um, okay, so let's, so that's that, Connie. Um, thank you, Jennifer, about the watermelon one. Okay, let's see, somebody said, interesting piece on your table, looks like doilies. I am not sure what you're referring to. Sorry, I don't have doilies. The the one I, I do have this quilt here that I was talking about earlier. So if you're just starting late, that's that. 
Susan said, I like the idea to group as amphibians or sea creatures. I really love that idea too, because I want to do an octopus with the crab and I want to do seashells and fish. So yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. Um, so I will be making these patterns available after I kind of, it, once I'm satisfied myself with how I'm going to use them in a quilt. Um, and aviary, yes, I love doing birds. I've done lots of birds. My second book is all includes a whole bunch of birds, but um, I'm gonna do tropical birds <laughs> with the parrot. So, okay. Um, let's see. Um, by the way, one thing that I, so, um, Lori Jacobs just said she loves the parrot. She wants to make that a pattern by itself. And I, I probably will make it a pattern by itself. Um, I, what I try to do is put as much content into a pattern to make it worth your investment. And then a lot of times I will separate them out and make them available individually as downloads. So for example, um, the harvest pattern is a really good example of that where that one actually just sold out, but you can buy all the downloads separately. But my daughter and I were just talking about this and Patty and I were talking about this yesterday. I really want to make bundled downloads available. So that's on my list of things to do so that when you purchase a download, you can get more than one download for the price or something like that. So um, anyway, that's what we're, we're working on. Um, okay. Oh, good. I'm so glad I'm making your ride on I-95 so much more bearable. We're glad to have you with us. <laughs> um, okay. Single patterns, yes, they. I will make them available, just like I said, as single patterns, but I wanna finish them off so that I'm happy and I'll, I'll get there. They're coming soon. Um, okay, so Terry just said, have you released the horse? Um, the horse, let's see, it might be out of stock, but we will reprint it and we will make the horse available again. So that will probably, if you wanna look for that, I would say we'll probably get that out in August. Um, let's see here. Hi from Chubbuck, Idaho. Okay, let's see. Okay, this person said I was late. Missed if we ever get the new items you have done. I may have missed this along the way. Sorry if I have, I am from New York, welcome. Um, you haven't missed any new patterns. The most recent pattern that I had come out was this one and the su sweet summer, of course. And there is a free video tutorial about making the watermelon. So we did that last week. If you didn't catch that, you can catch that on any of my um, platforms where this video is streamed live. So on YouTube, on my Facebook group, Collage Quilter Facebook group, Collage Quilter Academy and my Facebook page, Collage Quilter. So you can see that video of me making one of the slices of watermelon um, so you can follow along. It's super, super easy. Um, thank you so much, you guys. Okay, so the brand of my drafting table, I don't know, Tracy, what the brand is. I only will recognize it when I see it. So really email me, I'm happy to, I'm happy to find that for you. Um, Okay, let me, I'm just looking at the side here to, to check comments, make sure if I, if there are any questions, I want to make sure that I answer your questions. So as you have questions, just know in this live video that I am here for you. I want to answer your questions about collage quilting. Um, okay, so let's see, Laurel asked, I'd love to see the design you washed and dried. Um, oh, and we've got a friend from France too. Welcome. Okay, so here again, for those of you who are a little bit late, I'm going to give you as close up as I can. So first of all, this is the quilt that I just pulled out of the dryer. I put this in the wash this morning specifically so that I could share about washing a collage quilt with you. 
So this is called Woodlands. It is a parchment pressing pattern. And the key with this is I used light steam seam two, which is a permanent fusible. Um, and I did dense quilting on it. And I washed it on delicate cycle, which means it was washed in cold. And then I threw it in the dryer as well, just to see what, to see what the result was. And first and foremost, the stiffness of a collage quilt that we sometimes get when we use steam -a seam has been really minimized. So it's very, very supple. It feels um, a lot less stiff than one that hasn't been washed. And I'm gonna give you as close up as I can get so that you can see there has been very minimal fraying you need to expect that there will be minimal fraying because it's all raw edges. But to me, um, it looks really, really fantastic. I'm really thrilled with this, knowing that I can now throw my watermelon quilt in the washer and dryer because I really want to use it not as art. I want to use it as a beautiful centerpiece. So, um, so that's that. I'm very happy with this. I have no problem with having this soften up a little bit and having just a few, you know, just, it just kind of adds just a little smidgen of texture, which to me is wonderful because we are using textiles. Let's enjoy the texture of the textiles a little bit, right? So that is the quilt. Um, Nancy just asked, is there also a second edition of the Collage Quilter ebook? So the ebook was kind of tricky. Um, and I don't know if I, I, yes, there will be. Um, I am happy to share that with you. Um, although I don't have the ebook for sale right now on my website. I will try and make the ebook available um, on my website. Okay. Um, welcome to Jamie from Layton, Utah. Okay. Beach themed. Good. Lobster. I've thought about a lobster, Sally. So, okay. Uh, Tracy, again, this is the, this is the pattern that I was holding. It's the Woodlands pattern. And the topic was, can I wash a collage quilt? And yes, uh, this is the result because I just washed this in delicate and dried it as well. <laughs> Gail, which is the, <laughs> she said, hello from Oregon, which is apparently the closest spot to the sun right now. I am sorry that you're cooking right now. Oh gosh. Tell ya, it's a crazy world we live in and I'm sorry that you're suffering in the heat. Um, here in TO, we are thinking of you as we watch records being broken. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, so someone asked, ever use isocord thread? I, I don't know how to pronounce that. I actually don't know what isocord thread is for embroidery. So isocord maybe is what it's called. I don't know. Sometimes I will use embroidery thread. Um, I really like the Sous Bargo thread. And I like to use French silk ribbon. Um, Judy just asked, have you done a jellyfish? Nope, but that's on my docket. I want to. Uh, Lori Jacobs just asked, will you be putting any of the winter cardinal back in stock? Yes. In fact, I have a few winter cardinal patterns, not the kits, but I'll put the patterns and we will probably do those kits again, ready for the fall. Um, Okay, let's see if we have anything, any other questions. Somebody asked, did you use soap in washing the quilt? Yes, I did. I used soap. Um, and I used a dryer sheet. So there you go. And L Lina or, uh, asked, you're welcome, Lori. Lina asked, is the Woodlands available as a pattern? Yes, this is available on my website. It's a parchment pressing pattern. It's available at collagequilter.com. And there also is a full length video tutorial about making this project from start to finish on my teachable platform. So that is a paid video. I think it's 20 bucks, but it's hours of video instruction about um, everything from 
fabric selection to construction to composition and to quilting. So you can get that at collagequilter.com, the pattern. And then also on collagequilter.com is the link to my paid video tutorials. And I call that platform Collage Quilter Academy. It's actually um, collagequilteracademy.teachable.com is the website, but the link is on my website. So yes, there is batting. I used um, uh, I used a Hobbs 8020, so it's a cotton poly batting thin, and um, I, and I really like that. Uh, that's also what I used in the sweet summer. I'm very happy with that. Um, okay, so Susan just asked, hello from Indiana. Hello. Is there a difference in a pattern, like if it's one a download versus, versus buying one? So let me just briefly explain. Um, when you purchase a physical pattern from me, there are two types. So one is the parchment pressing pattern. When you purchase a parchment pressing pattern from me, you're going to get the full size formatted, the full size format piece of paper that has all of the elements that you need to to use to construct the design. You don't even need to use them. You can use whatever you want. So for this one, there's a great big, huge sheet of paper and it has all of these little elements in it as well as more elements that I didn't put in the pa in the in this quilt. Um, if you were to purchase the download version of that, you have to tape the templates together. So that is designed for you to be able to print it at home, at your home, you know, with your home printer on letter size paper and then tape it together. So that's the difference. Now, the other thing too is because I have patterns that are pre-printed foundation panels and those are where the pattern is printed in gray tones on a piece of fabric. Obviously, so that's a physical pattern and you can look for those. Those are also identified easily on my website that say pre-printed foundation panel is included in this pattern. For those, the download obviously doesn't include fabric, but it, it gives you instructions for taping the template together and then tracing it onto a piece of fabric. Or you can do the, the parchment paper, the parchment pressing method with that. So um, I hope that, I hope that helps. And I think we also have a YouTube video that explains and, and demonstrates the differences between my two types of patterns. So look for that as well on my YouTube platform. Um, okay, Bridget, thanks. Hello from Germany. I'm glad to have you here. All right, guys, I am going to get my hair done now. I've got to get to my appointment. So um, it's been my pleasure to be with you today. Again, I, I love to, I love Monday mornings. It really is a highlight for me to get to share what I'm doing and to say hello to all of you here. Thank you so much for being here. And um, just a reminder to, um, if you have questions with, for me ever, you can always find me at Collage Quilter. Um, you can email me, emily at collagequilter.com. You can find me on Facebook in the Collage Quilter Facebook group or the Collage Quilter Academy Facebook group. That group is specifically for my patterns. So um, I'm very present in there. I'd love your, I'd love to see what you're working on. And um, we will see you again next week. Okay. Have a great week, everybody. Stay cool. Um, stay healthy and safe and be nice to everybody that you meet. And we will see you again soon. Okay. Goodbye.